These are the best highlights from all the matches of the day during the 2024 LCK Summer Split. It's fun, but it is very heavy an opportunity. Execute really wanted to push this advantage. Does still have flash as he does get slowed down. And now Henna could be in a bit of trouble as well. Pay's moving on forward. Doesn't find the burst fire just there as Canyon's just making sure that there's no jungler. But now Lehens having to flash away after he gets lit on fire. And Raptor turning up. This is going to be a difficult one because Lehens is so incredibly low. But Henna and Execute not wanting to go too far forward. As Canyon's basically at full health and Pay's is still very scary. Ooh, looking for that little bit of a back. Get that health bar back sorted out so that he can come back in and get aggressive. Speaking of aggressive, audaciously charging in once again. Is Raptor interrupted as Canyon misses the flash, but he's still able to get first blood. They go two for one now, but Raptor, can he get it done? The flash forward, the wind becomes lightning, doesn't connect onto the hands. He's trying to kite it out as Trophy will get in here. Raptor's able to lock it down, but double buffs for the Corky will be the prize in the end. Three for three. What? I mean, what the heck? The just owl is, oh no. Oh dear. Execute in so much trouble. Just knocked up forever. Can't even crash down out of it. And now Pays is looking for even more. Doesn't have another dash over a wall and therefore is so critical here for Furex keeping oh. Genji out. Yeah, this is a little bit scary. Grubs have been started up. Canyon moves on in first as the rest of Fox very ready to rotate over. But look at that. It's one extender beam and Henner is so incredibly low. The equalizer comes down and there's the glacial prison on top. But the Magnus Storm is fantastic. But it's equalized by an extraordinary wild growth. And now Keen is looking to light clear on fire. He's slowed down by the Harpoons. Good flash. Gets him out of the way. But Chovy's grabbing kills on the Xin Zhao. And I don't think Keen wants to let him go from this one. Although we may have to as his harpoon just didn't quite have the ergs on it. Chovy going to stop closes back here, but I don't know whether they're going to be able to traverse with Henna being at full health. Still, this game is... It's well off the rails, in, yeah. Uh, Genji's hands, right? Something, something snowball rolling downhill. Yeah. Um, there's the Weaver's it's Wall. He no. takes Lulu and looks at the, you know, what people say about her. Oh, hold up, hold up. Yep, Glitch Prison, that is Henna. I don't think he's getting out of the way of this one, although Extended Beam was blocked by a minion. That is uh, a little bit rude. And now Closer is in trouble. Keen looking for him. Seismic Shove just going to zone him away. Of course, if he was going to keep on walking forward to try and get that aggression, it was not going to work out. So Closer has to use the Flash. I was checking this mic cooldown, and as he was using it, he uh, put it on cooldown. So I was like, oh, wow, Raptor got it. But he did not. And then he now looking to take some control here of this bottom side. Could be another kerfuffle as Execute going in for the engage. He's burning down low, but that is another wild growth to keep Canyon alive. Arctic Assault to get himself out of there now, though, as Can a Raptor looking for the re-engage, but Canyon's out of there. And look at Don't mid lane. The damage. Mid lane is, is open. You know, if you're going to come to make this type of play, you have vision control. Hannah has to come a lot faster than this because it's not a winning numbers game for Furex unless he's there. He's so late. Here comes the Weaver's Wall. Yeah, they're looking for more. Four versus three underneath this turret is now. They do manage to get their prize, which was Canyon. But can they get out on skate is the question. Raptor will end up going down is now the redemption. A little bit late to save his teammates and not able to save Lehens either, although Pays. he does get Hanna. Now Pay is able to rocket his way over. Is this going to be two kills for the Zeri? That might be the certification that you are looking for as Closer does have double buffs. He does have a seismic shove as well, but I don't know how he's going to be able to get himself out of this one. David Blaine Closer. Can we get that skin for Talia maybe? <laughs> yeah, could be an opportunity as no. Uh, the turret. Um, the only thing that he didn't take into like account. Vision yeah. control that could have been perfect for them to get them back into the game, but Hannah was just so late to it, and then they gave mid turret as well for it. And the pace still gets all the kills. Like, he wasn't there for the fight, but he still gets the reward. Yeah. And that's the disaster, unfortunately, for Fear X. As meanwhile, top side is broken open. Yeah, Canyon able to uh, charge Shelly into this inner turret. Uh, bottom side of the map, we did see that uh, Clear was at least able to get something back, but uh, then you pan towards the top lane and it's a bunch of extra money. Smart build here for Gen G. I think the only way... Oh, Raptor's in trouble. He is in a little bit of trouble. Going to be uh, flashing away immediately. They got the speed ups here. And uh, Pay's able to dash over that wall. Extendo Beam going to slow him down. Does have the Crescent Guard. As now we've got another hey. fighting pale onto Chovy. Let's see whether he can actually get a kill back. He almost does. Um, Raptor's going to die in the meantime, but they do get their prize, which was the first kill onto Chovy of the summer season. Lahens moving on over as well. You can see that teleport comes in from Keen. And Firex, they don't want anything to do with it. There's the equalizer, and Closer might have to take the red carpet out of there, but he's not going to risk it. He'll flash away immediately. Uh, Clear just doing his very best to hoover up these minions, and uh, Keen wants to deny that. Teleport is going to be utilized, of course. Keen, no way of stopping that. Uh, does at least break the Rooker and Shield. There is, uh, there's something. 
you know, it's it's been quite a dominant performance from Jetty and Virex are just trying to get any quadrant of the map back that they can. Oh, As Raptor's oh, caught yeah. again. Yeah, Raptor's just going to get chain CC'd. Unfortunately, he pops the Blast Cone, but Canyon just goes with him immediately, and that is another kill going over to Pays. I know, you know, it's it's been a tough game for Raptor here, but he has been caught a lot, but that's in part due to the fact that Ooh, it's going to take there. a hell of a Magnet Storm. Yeah, there <laughs> is a Varus. You know, we've seen certain Varuses find the steals here, but Henna, uh, he can't even walk up. There's an Equalizer that he has to try and get over as now Skana diving in, but the Polymorph was too good from Lahans. He flashes, he finds an Impale onto Chovy once again. He's going to get deleted. The Magnet Storm actually amazing from Execute, but they don't have a lot of damage remaining. Still, Henna dives forward. They do get the shield onto Pace, but not until that damage does come through. And Genji have to back away. Yeah, this turret still being up is huge. Oh, seismic shove, fantastic here as Closer still going forward. Trying to find some opportunities as Pays gets an extendo beam onto him. Oh, there's the shield to come through as well as these piercing arrows are scary. It's okay. really cool. They both got that cool golden sword thing. It's a quite critical item. It uh, is. It is. You could say. Uh, and Trophy finding some rockets here. They are not doing quite as much as they used to, but... Still, VRX a little bit worried. There is a Glacial Prison. Raptor could be in trouble yet again. There is some follow-up. The Equalizer just too strong. Thankfully, he's in Zhao. So he presses Crescent Guard, and then everything is absolutely fine. Does get an ultimate out of Lehens as well. So it's an R button for an R button. Still Canyon. with the positional advantage, Genji going to go for Hell. Baron. Teleport's coming through here. One more Hail Mary from VRX. Yep, that's going to be the Weaver's Wall. That does stop the Baron. Is now Keen with no Equalizer. This could be a difficult team fight, but Canyon's still going to try and start this one up. Clear taking about half of his health bar. Redemption to keep Genji healthy. Extendo Beam doesn't find the mark as Raptor looks for an angle. He's got all of his health back as well. Oh, poor the Baron is... Virex with a late decision to come over yeah. like a test. I mean, this is going down so fast, they might be able to just walk over the Dragon as well. It's down to 2,000 health. Yeah, Raptor nowhere near it. So the Baron, not long for the world at all. That is going to be the engage on to execute. He's able to crash down out of it, but the Chains of Corruption do not find the mark. And now Clear just trying to stand in front of his team to keep them alive. My god, these Harpoons are doing so much work as now Canyon. Yeah, he's relatively low. It is going to be a decent Impale to come through yet again. And they do manage to get rid of the Corky, but look at this. It's a Quadra kill already. Clear He's got a huge health bar, but I think it's another Penta in game number one of the summer season for Pays. He picks up a Penta and they'll just march towards the Nexus. Oh, Pays, another Penta, 11 kills for the man that set the record for most kills in an international at MSI. You give this guy a Zeri and he is gonna run away with the game. And the redemption dropped in the fight. Everything put on the Chovy. And yes, he ultimately dies, but it's a Chovy for Nexus trade. And Genji take the first win. Really the only one who played it in the LCK when, before it was very meta as it is now. And, you know, for me, I was like, well, it's, it wouldn't be Genji winning this series in style if he didn't play the card this style. They haven't won it. That's another root. That's another stack. And. Pays is already starting to get oh online. Dear. Clear. Yeah, Wall of Paint coming on in there, and oh no, the Gold Card actually eating up the entirety of the Lightning Rush. He's exhausted now. Keen pulls out a card, doesn't even need it. That's First Blood going over to Canyon. He'll grab some Dark Harvest stack while he goes through it. And uh, last game, mid, pre pretty big advantage, and obviously Canyon is just going to outfarm the Xinjiao on the Karthus. Well, there is the Destiny. Immediately, Keen is going to come down, finds the Gold Card, on to clear once again. Snare going to come on through, and there is the ulti from Canyon. Going to help take down that kill, grabs himself an assist. And he, uh, the fact that uh, Pays just sort of sits up towards the top side of the map, clear just wasn't really able to lane that much. Of course, not punished too much when it comes to farm, things like that. It's just a wave on Reed. his side as well as now. Pays in trouble, slicing Maelstrom going to come in, and that should be the first kill going over to Firex for this game. Uh, that's definitely good damage done to this turret. Does obviously a lot of damage with his passive and grabs a plate. Meanwhile, clear, not in the clear. Oh no, they are really just against the Pikachu this time around. Uh, the cannon once again going to be removed. And Keen going to grab yet another plate for himself and for his teammates. Now, Ziggs is great in these scenarios because he can rush turrets down so quickly. And obviously, Lehens, he doesn't have teleport. There's not much he can do to stop this. It will take a long time to punish him, but like, you can't even kill this guy. But anyway, they're at least going to be able to get Ziggs some farm here. He's going to pick up a ton of plate gold. Should be able to get the whole turret. He's got the execute with the satchel. Yeah. And he wins the race. Hey, there we go. So first hard block going over to Fearx. And we're going to have to see if Clear can actually make something happen proactively here on the map. Yeah, Execute moving up. Keen could be the one in trouble here as he did have the information, but there is 
the dive in. I don't think this Twist of Fate is going anywhere at all. And even the kitchen sink thrown from the Ziggs from downtown. Mega Inferno Bomb, there was no way of getting out of that one. And now they can move Heather Henna towards this top side. They've got another Minion Wave Conga lining in. There's a fair bit of damage available. And there are still plates up for the next 20 seconds. So that should be yet another one going down. And that is going to get them ahead of Execute right now. And uh, Henna at least is up at the same point as now Closer having to get away. The Phosphorus Bomb is going to connect though. There's the Buster Shot. Oh, the Requiem. And that is going to be enough. Canyon takes down the Tristana. There was too many things to dodge. The Dawning Shadow flies past. He dodges it, nailed it. And he's like, how do I outplay this giant bean? The Genji just deny it every time. They avoid Fear X and... Oh, okay, there's the flash forward. Canyon may be caught out of position here. Wind becomes lightning, comes in. Trovi will turn up. Mega Inferno Bomb coming down as well as now Canyon trying to get in position so he can die at the right spot. Trovi's going to go down as well, though. That is two, but the Requiem coming in. Paze should be taken down as the Explosive Charge, not actually to come through. Finally, he does fall. And that's the double for Closer and Fear X. They're on the ball. He only had to sacrifice one. This could be a barrier. Now this is massive because this is the type of play that you can't make with this draft for Gen G. Everyone's too squishy. The Karthus especially, even if he dies, can get some value done as they're all so low. But with the Ziggs here, I think they definitely have the damage to sustain through. Raptor will oh tank it up here. Uh, right? Don't stand on that, Henna! <laughs> well, Henna is just going to get out of there. Clear is taking more damage than he'd otherwise like. It's and okay, Raptor, they did. Raptor's like, guys, like, I've got this. It's fine. Just leave me alone. And uh, he is going to be out again. Karthus in the middle of the team fight with his E turned on. It's just not, it's not going to be enough. Yeah. And this is, this Whoa. is rough. There's a max range hook that's going to connect here as Gen G. They are angry about losing that last fight, but they're going to lose their Twisted Fate immediately. Lahan's taking a lot of damage. He'll flash away. And now Closer turns up. You can see that DPS really starting to get up there. But oh dear, this should just be two kills. One kill. Never mind, execute tanky enough to survive the Requiem there. Doesn't but, work uh, on the Malignants at least. Did you see all of the gameplay that Virex were doing? <laughs> and then Genji, like, Canyon's just like, yeah, how about this gameplay presses the R button? Yeah, he, he definitely let his team carry the, the kills there on that one. A little point. But this game is much closer, I think, than it looked like it was going to be as Execute finding Lehens. Yeah, Magnus Storm to come on through here as Closer. Rocket jumps forward just to close the distance, and Lehens just dead. No follow up available. And of course, nothing to really get on the map here because, of course, the Baron not available. And uh, Keen is on the bottom side. And Gen by G starting a Baron, that's going to do it. Genji can just let this go and not force here and say, we'll take Infernal Soul instead. But the timing is a bit awkward. They're going to just let this go for now, pushing mid to try to draw some VRX members back. There's no wave here. Very awkward for Genji. The Baron, it's gone, Atlas. Yeah, and Destiny's pop. They know exactly what's going on, but there was no way for them to contest. Requiem and just for the poke? <laughs> yeah, yes, I mean, is that poke? You almost killed Closer, okay. I mean, the timing of this is really thin for Genji Keen. Oh, it's have stopping destiny. the backs. So it just makes sure he can break open the base. Yeah. They get Infernal Soul, and they expose the bottom lane inhibitor. Now, the Baron buff is going to be fantastic, obviously, with the, the Tristana and the Ziggs push we talked about. Took the Blast Cone in, but you can see the rest of Fear X rotating over. This time, Closer doesn't start the fight too early. And if they do get in here and manage to find something, it is going to be important. Good buffer to get closer out of there and Raptor taking so much damage. Oh my god! Even the piercing darkness is so scary as Raptor! It will he survive? He will! Okay, he's fine. He's fine. He had hysterics. So I don't know, Atlas. You need to just look at the items before you get excited. He does not have Warmogs though, so I don't know if he's going to live much longer. Okay, there is a Destiny coming in as Henna's going to have to flash away, but there is the Depth Charge. And Keen's on the flank angle. There is absolutely nowhere to run. Raptor tries to flash for him, but the gold card was in the air. And they start off the fight with a kill. The Magnus Storm, it doesn't do anything. The slicing Maelstrom doesn't either. But he is still able to take down Pace. Clear, just exploding. What was that damage? It was absolutely insane. And now Keen looking for a little bit more. Already the bottom lane is being wiped out. But Trovi comes in for the cleanup. And the closer is still alive. Close in the gold. Exactly. It is under 4K right now, despite the fact that it feels like Genji have had full uh -oh. control. And speaking of which, here is a Destiny in. Slicing Maelstrom is going to stun up Keen for the moment. He does have his Zonyas at the ready as well, but I don't think he's going anywhere. Yeah, four members of Genji probably going to be enough to take down the cannon once again. Two, six, and three. Unfortunately, Clear has really been the target. He really has. Some backs going to get stopped, at least one. Yeah, they tried to stop them from being able to defend, and honestly, they couldn't defend anyway, because the turret just kind of fell over when it saw Genji. We are quite late into this game, and they do have a... ...be that far up, and that 
call from clear to be that far out means they lose an inhibitor right before this Baron spawns. And with the speed at which they could take this Baron here with this extremely fed Karthus, I mean, it goes quick, and then you go straight to Elder. You got Exodia, and we'll get our fancy little graphic uh, for yeah. it because... I mean, there's just no stopping this, and they're going to try to maybe rush this down. I don't think so. You have to win a wombo combo. Vision is cleared. Maybe execute, make a hero play. I don't know, Atlas. There's the no low T-Rex. There's no Requiem, and there's no Dawning Shadow. Genji are not at full power right now, and this goes down so incredibly fast. There is teleport as well. Yeah, good satchel to try and get Lahans out of there, but he still manages to land. Oh, it's a steal from Canyon! Really? You do that to them right now? That is so unfair. Now the executes come in from this big old dragon. That is the very cool borders. Array and Genji. That's so it. We're going home early tonight. Yeah, they certainly are the 2 0 for the MSI champions. But in this game, BK Fierex, they made them work for it. I actually think that they played very, very well to their win conditions in this composition. Just didn't quite work. And with the fact that they fell behind early, maybe we could have seen something different if the early game had gone better. But I think it was still a valiant effort. Still, Genji will walk away with a 2 0. Isn't there. I feel like this comp is quite complex to play out because. You're once again Tristana Zig, so you have some burn damage in the longer fight. You can take uh, don't mind where Dundun's at, right? He just needs to not die. I think if he doesn't die, then he can still possibly find himself an ultimate in the later stages of the game. This is what we're used to seeing with Dundun, and I'm going to cast a curse him instantly. Is Wait. now get oh, he's still alive. All right, he's alive for now. He's down to 100. The Shuriken is not going to land, but there's the Heartbreaker, and it does exactly that. As that's first blood going over to Ona. And Dundun is now the Drake lead. As meanwhile, yeah, uh, we got a gobble towards his bottom side. Mega Inferno Bomb going down, though, as Carry is taking so much damage. In goes Gumiyushi, just trying to keep them busy, and eating the Grey Health is Carry up, but Gumiyushi's gonna be left to the Wolves, and Sylvie locks down the kill. Ona not able to get anything back on the other side, and Fisher, Fisher. is coming in as well, looking for some of these resets as he does manage to get the explosive charge down, but another nice use of a bit of that thick skin and Carry vibe. Sure. You're like sundering the divine, and he's kind of got that bad guy attitude. I, I, I'm, I'm into it. Well, we're going to see this Herald start up from T1, and you know, this is a Senna early game, right, with sitting on a Dirk, and they're still happy to take this fight because the bottom side is where Nongshim are trying to make a play here, but even Faker is not really under any threat. Okay, Ooh, Glacial Prison, oh, just barely out of range. Faker's calculated. There's no blue buff or anything like that either for him to get that off with. He actually has to just auto carry or get over this minion wave. Getting closer to it, but yeah. he's under threat. And then now this is a good opportunity. I mean, look, Fisher can rush this dragon down so quickly. I think T1 are just going to have to let this one go. Yeah, too much vision control here for Nongshim. They had control of the river. Face checking wasn't really an option here for T1. And so Nongshim able to grab that first Hextech Drake. It is not the end of the world, right? This wasn't Nongshim stacking the first two. T1 being able to find. And there is the horizon focus now done for Jiwoo. Trying to keep this turret alive, I think they oh, will. Oh, Dundun, that uh -oh. was beautifully played by Zayas here as he dash cannons. And Dundun runs the other direction. It looks silly from Zayas, but Dundun has signed, has sealed his own fate. As on the top side of the map, we get a big old zoom from Jonah Strong as Sylvie flubs the ultimate, unfortunate. Of glacial prisons, you know, and Ash crystal arrows. arrows. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, and we got another team fight. As Jiwoo is really dead. Zayas, Zayas what? is so huge. Yeah, he has just come out of uh, he's come out of his short break, and he's like, I'm going to play cannon. I'm going to kill everyone, and that's what he's going to continue to do. As another Yordle is on the ground, he's like, I am the Yordle that's allowed to exist in this game. He killed three of them, one after the other. It just doesn't even matter. Like he doesn't need his own to set up a good ult. He's just picking people on his own. Okay, here we go. Still be the hero. Yeah, uh, Sylvie was nope. looking for an angle as everyone <laughs> closes in on him. And that is going to be the Baron going down. And all of a sudden, T1 are uh, excruciatingly far ahead, and it is almost doomed for Nong. It would have been easier to steal if he was playing Wukong, but... Yeah, yeah. But he probably still would... If that set up, it would not have mattered. <laughs> and now, finally, they will get that mid turret. As owner, will he get punished for it? There's no, there's no one near Sylvie, but there's a... Well, Ziggs, oh, okay, Dundun teleports in. Yeah, Dundun does have a decent Nar bar as well as he is about to hit Mega Nar. There's the flash. No! Another miss, unfortunately, as Ona is in the mist heading towards that top side. Fisher, maybe you can. No, he's a bit too far away as 
Um, cue the music as they got the him right now. Permafrost, that one's targeted, baby. No. Never mind, it doesn't matter. He's no. back into the mist no. again. The Nar goes completely the wrong direction. And no, I just, uh, I'm so sorry. I, I get up and walk. Yep. And this is the very serious we're going to win. Okay, watch this part. Watch one. this part. Yeah. Watch where he dodges it. Oh, deft play yeah. from Owner. Yep. I'm glad we got the first prison for that. I mean, he did aim it towards where Owner's base was sort of... Ah, uh, yeah, there's no saving oh. is there? And what now does he say? What does he say? Okay, that was, that was clever. <laughs> he, did, he wasn't even on the screen. Well, he can't see him, obviously, so yeah. he doesn't know. He just guessed, but like... Yeah. He could not. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, no, Baby Yoda doesn't sound like that. He, oh, he yeah, just, I don't know. He just croons and stuff. <laughs> and, all right, Mega Inferno Bomb coming hey? down. Uh, Wait. Trying to get a kill on the carrier. Get him right. He is so tanky. Okay, they got Finally, him. Oh. he is going to be taken out. I thought maybe he was going to survive there as a Heartbreaker over, but Fisher actually flashes it. It's a double for Sylvie. All and right. now Zeus is here. Guga is just going to die. Fake is able to pick up that kill after just the edge of the dash cannon from Zeus helped him grab that with a Sand Soldier auto. And T1 is going to try and knock down. They don't the wave. push the uh, the situation. Yeah, they lose the wave too, so it's really just not possible. As Karia is just chilling here. Meanwhile, oh, we got a Faker had his back. I was actually wondering whether that was going to happen. No, Jim. Fisher is able to cancel it. Zayas, he finds a slicing maelstrom, but unfortunately, would have really liked his onya. So maybe that's a cast of curse as well. And they get two. Both solar lane is dead. The Baron is up. Oh. That's bounty gold. Oh god! So play, big punish onto Faker there. He does not have teleport, so when he respawns, he won't be able to get here. No, Zayas could, but this is only if they can delay this Baron. So. They Owner's need 25 seconds. They need 25 seconds. Dinden on the turn. There is Guga with a decent hook carry, able to tank for a while, but there is no way that they could do anything about it. And Nongshim, they turn on a dime. They grab the pick. There's 12 seconds on Zeus. It's down to 50% health, but with Jiwoo and Fisher, this is not long for the world. And the Baron will be taken one apiece, and Nongshim on their march for the comeback. All right, there's a lot of vision that they cover to get back to that dragon. And Dundun is also, he's level 18, right? Like, he's got his three items, and yes, he's... Okay, Zeus is going to stun him up. He does have his Merc Tread, so that's going to make him okay. As Okay, Fisher finds the Buster Shot. There is the Zonyas from Zeus as Dundun finds himself in a very awkward position and will be cut down. But Zeus is out of the fight for the moment. Carrier is just going to gobble up Fisher though. And now the Abyssal Dive comes in. He's trying to get out. Fisher survives for so long, but Ona is able to pick it up. And now the resets come in. How many it's like resets on resets right now as he does get one with the Rocket Jump also. And now Carrier finds the Tongue Lash. Sylvie not going to get knocked up, but he is in so much trouble and Nongshim they did so well to try and bring it back but like dominoes they fall one after the other and T1 will be able to find the fight it'll take a while because Sylvie's got a decent health bar but there is the ace and it is clean from T1 yeah unfortunate for Nong fortunately good Zonia's there from Zayas and his play it looked greedy I was worried for him but ultimately will be what causes Nongshim to lose this game as Fisher tries to turn around and fails and T1 will win it and in the end and I look I don't mind I just I just love the fact that there is so much drama whenever we have a Nongshim versus T1 it never disappoints Faker <laughs> picks up a double as he shuffles them out of the fountain I will say it never disappoints but if you want him more than the Nar does obviously and so you know, this is a good adaptation here for Nongshim Red Force, but it does, I feel like, kind of warp. Trying to find some of these sweet spots, not going to get them on Zayas, at least in this moment. You can see Sylvie rotating over, looking for a bit of a dive. Down to 400 health is Zayas. This is a possibility. As Permafrost up and available as well, going to be starting it off with Sylvie tanking. There's the flash and first blood with an aftershock. You love to see it. It's pretty cute. As now, Ona looking for a potential 1v2, but... Uh, by that, I can see Colney a little bit later on the rotation over with Baker. Gets here first. Baker having six. I just don't know if you really want to try to force this, Nongshim. The Night Empress Divide can be fight changing. Oh, Hook is going to connect, but it is on to Zayas. Colney now waiting for his opportunity. He just dives on in. Empress Divide pushes him out immediately and all out. He's going to get rid of the Tristana. Good news, she's already taken down Sylvie as well. And it's an absolute disaster here. Owner also tanking forever. Finally, he falls down, but Guga has to overextend in order to get it. And it's a double kill for the Cassante. It looked pretty good for a few moments. 
and then it was all over for Nongshim. The problem is no matter what engage, usually not pulling the trigger. The spacing on this man, that was actually clean because both ultimates for uh, for Owner and Faker there would have linked together to actually get his demise if he was like one centimeter closer in that instance, but he handles it well. He's also got Flash. Faker just walking towards Colby. Oh. Nice Flash. He's able to get out of it this time. Sylvie doing one of his patented ultimates here underneath the turret. And they are going to be able to make their way out as Hook just narrowly avoided by Calculated. Faker with the Blast Cone. Can't avoid that one though as he does Flash to get himself to relative safety. Mihail with a nice Flash Q, but that's about all he really got out of it. Dawning Shadow comes in, decent little hook. Mihail stays alive for quite a while, and Sylvie gets over the wall. Owner will go down, but it's another double for the Kazante, and they just took too long. And Zayas is gonna be able to cut them down. Carrier finds the knock up onto Sylvie as well, who's on the wrong side of the rift here, and he just gets searingly charged. So many of them. Unfortunately for Sylvie, not able to find that one. Hook is going to connect here from Guga, though, as Carrier in position. And Guga immediately feels a little bit uncomfortable about the decision he just made. Punished immediately, Faker able to grab that kill. And Nongshim now find themselves without a support, and it's kind of crumbling, it's kind of falling apart. And it's feeling like T1 just has Nongshim exactly where he's here after a, a series of really close to greatness plays, but yeah. You know, T1 were just the stronger team on the day. It's not over till it's over, but it's feeling pretty close. Feeling like it's getting there. I also think that T1 upgraded their draft as well with this one as Season Desist comes in. Mahail is going to get all outed and destroyed. The Mega Inferno Bomb, just not as mega as it has been in other games in the past. And T1 looking for an inner turret here as well. They've got a cannon minion. They will be able to cut this one down. Oh dear. Crazy stuff, man. That was like the, the wanted water balloon. Yeah, that's like the moment where, you know... <laughs> okay, hold up, hold up. All right, Sylvie. Uh, he's looking to try and get out of here. Might be able to do so as old Bellow's breath is going to absorb the Glacial Prison. Pulled back by Zaius as well, and he's just being thrown around like a rag doll. Or a rag four. Um, and Ono was fighting Mihail and realized that he is not Zaius, and <laughs> that's not a blast cone, and oh. he's able to get out. Well, you know... King. Yeah, a bit of flanking, a very deep one is... Oh, max range hook from Guga, and he's going to be placed underneath the turret. Mega Inferno Bomb does go down. The Ignite absorbed by the Zonyas and Faker. He does have to flash, but he does make it out as well. Faker's got perfect KDA despite a series of shenanigans, let's say. It's like Nongshim are just trying to annoy him, and he's... And, he, and he's also absorbing all of that pressure. Yeah. All Nongshim want is to kill Faker, as Jiwoo once again going to take down this turret, and once again going to get punished. No, no, never mind. Oh, oh there's yes. the season assist. 1v3. Ona says, all right, he'll trade his life for it. As Faker, he was rotating over. But he is now, he was sort of 1v3, but he's actually just fine. As he is going to survive once again. Walks away with 300. Zayas goes all out underneath the turret. The double knockoff is just gorgeous from Carrier, who's able to tank for about 16 years. I think I was rounding down on that one as well. As Sylvie, he's able to Arctic Assault. Went to the Faker Temple that was oh, wait, set up. up as, oh, okay, maybe this is the Caster Curse. As Jiwoo looking for that flank angle. Gumiushi going to flash another one to Aslan. As now Guga, he will find Faker. How does he get out of this one? He's got, no, never mind. He just doesn't. And Zayas, he's found Mahail. Does push the Aatrox into the wall, but maybe that's exactly where Mahail wanted him. Finds the third Q, and that is going to be the kill going over to Call Me. Where have I seen this before? Okay, so this the is eulogy Nongshim was read way too early, I think. This is when this is when Nongshim hold up the game one playbook and they're like, all right, Baron, go to Baron now. As oh. Cougar's gonna buy time. He is definitely doing that. The Ram comes out. Nice buffer on the uh, dredge line. As we can see, he is buying time because the Baron currently going down right now. T1 taking their frustrations out on the Nautilus. Final punch does come on through. Looking forward to Arcane Six okay, wait, as well wait, as wait, okay. Wait, the wait. Rift Herald is going to do some scouting Guma and space. gets the information that the Baron does go down. Wait, how many laps? And Guma completely around now. Yeah, Mahal on that flank angle as well. He can get into that pit with the Umbral Dash if he would like to. As Sylvie is looking to try and make sure he's there to contest this smite. I, mean, I think they want a team fight. I don't think they want to go for let's just take the dragon and get out. I think it's just trying to find that ultimate angle. At Pope needs to hit for Ziggs. He's got 800 damage. This fight needs more. Oh, Sylvie with the steal. So we even out the dragons. Okay, T1 just walk away from this one. And there's no consolation mid turret. I think I got the full, unfortunately. 
Um, but I don't necessarily know what that means because I don't know which card I played previously. I think we're all fools to predict yeah. this game. As uh, They're doing Baron. It's a T1 moment here. It's Rotation is coming up. It's going down extraordinarily quickly. The teleport in from Mahail will get him into the fight. as Mega Inferno Bomb to at least lower the health bars somewhat. And Zayus maybe caught out of position. Well, I, he's Kasante, so never mind. And T1, they move back towards the Baron. It's secured by Ona. The double knockup comes in from the call of the Forge God, and now they throw the kitchen sink at them. Call me to be taken down so low as Zayus gets into the fight in the nick of time, and Carrier somehow survives as well. Faker is able to take down yet another one, and he's able to kite them out as well. And Jiwoo, once again, the last man standing. Game one, game two. Is there a difference, Wolf? It's another team fight for T1. Jiwoo who dies to go for the kill. He's the one who's got the burst. And now you have no sustained damage, no way to clean up. And Guma's going in. Yeah, he's looking for it. Oh, man, even the Piercing Darkness doing so much. Faker just slides on in to help him lock that one down. T1, they secure the delayed ace, and they will be able to take at least this inhibitor turret. We'll see whether they can actually do more here as the top lane also being attacked. Azeus pushes that minion wave in. They get the snare very nicely onto Sylvie to make sure that they can at least secure that turret. But the game, Rip Bloom online, and the game continues. But I feel like this one is tough to throw, even if T1 really do wad it up and, yeah. and wind up their arms. Oh, every wow, okay. Bye-bye. Um, Ah, well, Call Me was, he had some health before. It's definitely gone now. Nice call <laughs> of the Forge God comes on through. And Mahail not even going to be able to get into this fight as the Dawning Shadow comes down. Groomer's like, I'm a carry now, guys. And he's going to be able to take him down yet again. Faker is there, picks up the kill. The flash forward as Groomer just wants to take this game. It, he's done. He just wants to go home. That is going to be the bottom inhibitor going down, and Ona, he's walking straight towards these Nexus turrets. Never you mind. They're not going to waste their time with those turrets. This game is over. T1 pick up the 2-0. It wasn't necessarily clean, but in the end, I don't think there's any disputing who the better team on the day was. No, I don't think so. And I think ultimately it doesn't matter how clean it gets. It these were some of the best highlights from the 2024 LCK Summer Split matchups of the day. Which moment was your favorite? Let me know in the comment section below. This is OP, and I'll see you tomorrow. Take care.